Hello, my friends. This is The Art of Prepping. I hope everyone's good today. In this video, I just want to give 50 examples of improvised self-defense options for those environments that are non-permissive. And what I mean by that, it's those environments that are kind of like the gun-free zones, the weapon-free zones, restricted zones. You know, it's just, you know, you have various elements of society that try to micromanage other people. And unfortunately, in these non-permissive environments, you're very much restricted. You're limited in what you can have for self-defense. Now, I don't understand that. But that is how some people rationalize safety, is by disarming the good people. And so regardless of what you think about that, there may be times that you need options to save your life or to protect the lives of others or whatever. And so to just think that someone's always going to be there to save you is really just ridiculous fantasy. So here are some examples. I'm going to go through them pretty fast. A lot of this is just common sense. Some of these things, you know, you just kind of have to think about it. But here we go. Number one, a handheld light. You want a, a light that's going to be at least large enough that you can palm and have a little extra sticking out from your from your palm. And so I would say something like in the realm of five to five and a half inches would be a good light at a, at a minimum and a nice stout light. And so you can use the actual light itself, you know, to identify a threat, to blind a threat, uh, to disorient a threat. But you could also use it as an impact weapon. And so you also have the comb and the brush. Now, you probably just wouldn't want to pick any comb or brush, but you'd want to find a nice, stout, heavy-duty comb or brush. You could use it, uh, a plastic comb or brush, but they do have metal brushes and combs that are much stronger. Uh, number three is a metal pen. Now, most people are thinking about, why not a tactical pen? It's made for self-defense. If you can get it in that environment, go for it. But there are a lot of places that tactical pens are not allowed. They're just too so-called, well, overt in the sense that they're just, they look too scary. They're just too tactical, <laughs> you know, so to speak. So they look dangerous and they look like a weapon. So if you can get a more low-key tactical pen, that's good. Uh, but there's all kinds of metal pens that are stout and strong that can be used for self-defense. And that also includes markers. There's some really stout markers out there that they may not be perfect, but you jam it in someone's eye or in throat, uh, it's going to jack you up. A briefcase or a waist pack or a purse or a handbag even a backpack can be used as barriers, um, as uh, just a means to distract someone, to hit someone in the body or in the face, in the head. Uh, you can swing it around to create distance. It is better than nothing. A carabiner, especially the larger oversized carabiners, can be palmed and used as a part of a, a striking technique uh, to focus impact and so it is something that you would want to practice with, and it's not optimum uh, to strike with the carabiner, but it is something. A rolled up magazine. Now, if you can't have a Kubaton, in some environments you can, but in a lot of places you can't have a collapsible you know, baton, a Kubaton uh, of any type. So if you can't have a collapsible baton or a coup baton or any variant of that, a rolled up magazine or newspaper, you want to just really roll it up real tight, though. Um, it's going to be pretty amazing what you can do with it. A belt, you know, to flail a belt like a whip or to use the end that has a heavier belt buckle could do a lot of damage, especially if you're whipping or striking the face. It is better than nothing. Footwear. To have steel-toed boots and to kick with that, to strike with your feet, you know, reinforced footwear is no joke. You can really jack someone up with that. Also, if you wear like 
wooden clogs or wooden shoes. You take one of those off and hit someone in the head with it to, you know, to defend yourself or to protect others. Uh, that's going to be a pretty substantial thing. So just think about that. Another item is to carry a whistle on your person. It's very non-threatening. You can keep it on your key ring even. And it is something that if you get the right whistle, it can cause pain in the ear uh, because it's so loud. Of course, a whistle can also alert others around you that something's going on. Uh, you can signal to other people and so forth. You could also carry a cane with you, even if you don't really need a cane in some environments that may be so dangerous, but you're not allowed to have anything on your person, a cane or a walking stick, uh, a staff might be a little more difficult to get in those environments, but it is possible. But having a cane, for example, it's just like having a baton with you. And so you can do a lot of damage and protect yourself pretty efficiently. Um, if you know what you're doing. Next is going to be various tools. You may be in the business of repair or construction. And so you might find yourself in a situation that you're being threatened and you are quote unquote disarmed, but yet you have your tools. And so in this situation, a hammer, um, a metal a pair of scissors, you know, metal stapler. It could be that you're in an office environment, you know, and you have something on your desk. Maybe it's your stapler that you could use as a blunt impact weapon. And so you also have things like a screwdriver. I mean, that would really jack you up if you were to use it against someone and struck their face, you know, maybe into their neck or in their face of different places, maybe in their eye. I mean, that would totally jack you up. Uh, just know that there's legal implications for defending yourself in these manners. You also have multi-tool. You know, some people think about multi-tools. In some environments, you're not allowed to have a blade on your multi-tool. But even with a bladeless multi-tool, you could have it as a blunt impact weapon. It's almost like a modified coubaton. And so you could even open up the multi-tool so the pliers are actually in the open position and strike like that to get more reach. A metal stapler. This is something that, you know, going back to that example, they come in different forms and definitely different sizes. Uh, but can you imagine, though, just getting hit in the head with a metal stapler? I'm just Going back in my memory here and just thinking about when I was younger, there was a few office jobs that I had and uh, my manager had this massive, just, just this old massive, just massively heavy steel stapler. <laughs> I don't know where he even got that from, uh, but this thing was just like several pounds. Can you imagine like just picking that up and just hitting someone in the head with it? It's just like devastating. You'd probably knock the person out and you could really do some damage. So there's a lot of options around this. A metal ruler. A metal ruler is could be pretty formidable as well. Uh, some of them do have a bit of flex in them. Some of them don't. And so even if you don't even use it um, as a striking weapon, though, uh, you still have typically edges on those metal rulers that could be used uh, to cut into. I mean, just think about some of those are pretty sharp. So that's an option. A binder. A binder can be used as kind of like a makeshift shield, or it could be something you could throw or flail in someone's face just to buy you time and, and space to get away. Uh, sometimes that's all you need is just a few seconds, just to buy a few seconds, and then things change for you and the odds of survival uh, change in your favor. A clipboard can be the same thing. It can just be something that you can hold out in front of you to block punches from the threat or that you could thrash it in someone's face. You know, you could do a lot with a very stout, uh, you know, clipboard, you know, or binder. Another option is something that a lot of people use on a regular basis, especially at work, and that is a lunchbox. 
And I know there's a lot of people who only use lunch bags of different types. Sometimes it's insulated bags, but you might want to consider a lunch box and not just a plastic kind of dinky box, but a nice, robust metal box, a metal lunch box. And in that, you could actually have it layered with other options, options that are going to be legal and that would not get you in trouble. And that could include a metal water bottle. So not only could you use the metal lunchbox as like a blunt impact tool or as a shield, but you could have things like a water bottle that you could also use as a blunt impact weapon. You could also use your can opener. I mean, just think about this. You know, a metal can opener, it's, got, it's not going to be out of place because you can always just keep a can of whatever in there, you know, a metal can of food. And of course, even that metal can of canned food can be used as a blunt impact weapon. It could be thrown. It could be jammed in someone's face. It could be done a lot of things with it. But the metal can opener could be very formidable. You could always have a glass bottle at your desk or in your lunch bag. Uh, These can be broken off and you have sharp edges and they can be used to certainly deter most, you know, sane people. But of course, lots of criminals are not very sane, but it does give you another option. And then, of course, we have the metal chopsticks, something that you don't hear a lot about, but you could certainly strike with those. That is not going to be fun to be basically stabbed by metal chopsticks. And, of course, if you went into soft tissue, went into the neck, into the eyes, I mean, you could really mess a person up. You also have those metal straws. I would get maybe the extra long metal straws and the one piece design and you can always just pe- keep a piece of, um, of like duct tape uh, stuck on the inside of your lunchbox. And that you could always, at a moment's notice, peel out that little piece off and stick it on your thumb. And that could be the place that the, the actual metal straw would go up against you know, the thumb because you're going to lock in that straw in your hand. And to keep that straw from slipping out or your hand slipping down, so to speak, you put your thumb out at the end and to keep your thumb from getting torn up, you just have a piece of duct tape or whatever tape you like on your thumb. Next, we have, of course, the very obvious that in most office environments, work environments, you have hot water available in some means, some way. And so they This hot water typically is there to make some hot tea or coffee or hot cocoa, you know, to have a hot chocolate. And there's other things as well that you can make from hot water. And so you take that in whatever form that you have available, whatever mixture of whatever's in your hot water, and you throw that in someone's face, you know, a threat, someone's trying to hurt you. That's going to really mess them up. Um, It could even do permanent damage. Um, It certainly could burn them in a very serious way. Uh, So obviously you wouldn't want to do that unless you just had to, just like any of these things. But certainly hot beverage in the face is going to mess you up. Next is a laptop. You could use that as a shield, especially if the laptop is in a laptop bag. You could definitely hold that out in front of you as kind of a shield, a barrier, just an in-between, especially if someone has a a weapon, like a knife or some kind of sharp tool, and they're trying to cut you and stuff. You can hold that out in front of you and block and try to divert the attacks uh, that are directed toward you or others. A hard hat. It's kind of the same philosophy. You can use your hard hat as an in-between shield to block or to deflect various punches and weapons that are being directed toward you or others. Pry bar. Pry bar, though, certainly could be something that you could strike with. And this is something that in a lot of work environments, it's available. It's there. It's just part of the job, you know, some of the tools you have. And of course, you know, pry bars come in lots of different form factors and sizes. So this is something in particular, though, that you really want to kind of just think through this and and kind of be aware of what you have at your disposal. 
Now, in terms of a camera tripod, I think this is really kind of, this is pretty awesome. A lot of the, the camera tripods are uh, made so that you can just uh, take off the wing nuts. And some of them are made a little bit different, but the ones that I have, though, have wing nuts. And then you can just basically just take one of the legs off very quickly and you can use that leg. You can extend it to whatever size you want and use it basically like uh, a collapsible baton. Now, it's not as strong as like a, a place baton and all that, but it is something, you know, it is something that's better than nothing. Utensils. Now, you may not be able to bring in an actual cutting tool like a knife, so, you know, like a steak knife uh, to work in, in, a, in a restricted environment. But, you know, you still might have your fork or a spork or a spoon or something of that nature. And you can practice holding them in different positions. For example, the spoon, you probably take the actual scoop part, the, the larger section of the spoon where you would actually like put it in your mouth and you would hold that in your palm. And then you would have the more pointy handle as your projectile, as maybe your defensive edge. And of course, you can always pick utensils that are more optimum for fighting than others. And of course, the fork, you could always just keep the pointy ends out, you know, and and just hold it like a, like you would normally and so forth. So just some things to think about. Just think about your utensils. And if you just had to use them in a defensive role to protect yourself, how would you do it? Now, this next one is a little bit uh, out there for most people, and this is not going to be the quickest option on the the list, uh, but it is something that if you have a few moments to put together, it is something that really is going to be very subtle. And most people would never put one and one together to figure out what you even have. And that is that you can have a piece of cordage. You know, I would prefer parachute cord, but whatever you have available, you have a piece of maybe anywhere from like three to six feet of some kind of cord. And then in another location on your person or in your bag or wherever, you have this oversized nut, you know, a nut that goes on a bolt. But it, you want it to be pretty substantial and maybe at least a few ounces. And what you can do is you can loop or tie or fasten. There's all kinds of ways to do it. The cordage to that nut. And all of a sudden you have this weapon that you can swing, that you can use as a projectile. You can break out windows. You can... You know, basically use it to defend yourself. You can use it to cause impacts in people's body at different places. Can you imagine getting hit in the face with a very substantial nut that's attached to a piece of cordage that you're flailing at full speed, at full force? And, and if you have any type of upper body strength, you can really, really move that. And uh, you could certainly even potentially break bones with it. So that is just an option. Another interesting thing, though, that is available in most environments is going to be a bucket. Now, they, buckets come in all different sizes. And so a bucket, which could be found in the maintenance closet or sometimes buckets are just stored in the closet, bathroom uh, space, whatever you, you probably know at work where the, where there's a bucket, maybe they're outside in a shed or maybe you have them around, you know, here or there, you know, in this location that you go, that's restricted, but a bucket, you know, this is something that also can be, uh, something that you can hold between you and the threat and deflect punches and weapons and prevent someone from trying to stab you. And you can use as a shield and you can even like push back and, use a bucket to push or to strike. Um, as odd as that, as that sounds, I know a lot of people think that would be very odd to take a bucket and try to, you know, hit someone in the face with it. But if you struck out and you kept walking and you, you, you thrust out, you literally can create a lot of space and you can push someone back, especially if someone only has a very small hand tool that they're trying to use against you and they're trying to use it as a weapon, and you have a five-gallon bucket, well, you, you have a little more reach than they. And, and then also you have the ability to literally deflect and to punch back with the bucket. Um, I, I'm more of kind of partial toward the five- and six-gallon buckets, but, of course, you, you just work with whatever you have. Now, this is going to be a little hard for some people just to explain why they have this. Uh, 
especially if you're just a big burly man and you are carrying some metal crochet needles and hooks, that's going to be kind of a different and alternative uh, to the norm. But it doesn't mean that there aren't guys out there that don't, uh, you know, crochet, you know, uh, they don't knit, if you will. And all I'm saying here is that for some people, it's a little easier to pull off to carry some crochet needles and hooks. And of course, it doesn't hurt if they're metal uh, to the, in, in a worst case scenario, they can be used for self-defense. And so some of these crochet needles are very substantial and they have a lot of reach and they would really jack you up if you were to use them against soft tissue and, well, you get the point. A chain and padlock. Now, this is something that in some environments is very commonplace. There's gates and there's all kind of access controls and things in some facilities and buildings and all that. And so you put chain and a padlock together, you swing it about, you've got a pretty serious weapon there that you can really hurt someone or even kill someone. Some of these padlocks that that are used in various facilities are very substantial. We're talking many ounces and maybe even into the pounds. I've seen some pretty substantial padlocks. And so these things, I mean, just the padlock alone, you know, that you would palm and use it as a striking weapon could really mess someone up. Um, and even the chain by itself. But when you put them together, you you have something that really can mess someone up and can create some distance from from someone trying to hurt you, you can create some some space and hopefully keep them at bay until help arrives or you can get away. The umbrella is one of these things that there's all different types. Some of them are very flimsy. I would avoid those if you're going to try to use it potentially in the future for a self-defense uh, tool. But there are some umbrellas that are made for self-defense. But even those that aren't, uh, there are some that are very substantial and very sturdy. So this is something that is very socially acceptable to to carry an umbrella when there's like a cloudy day and there's rain out or something. It's just this is not a big deal. And so an umbrella can be used to help block punches or strikes that people have maybe a weapon in their hand. You could also use the umbrella to strike back. Uh, so definitely can help you keep space from a threat or keep the threat from you. Now, in terms of a lighter, now this is something that's kind of iffy, of course, but if you have a pretty substantial jet lighter in particular, I think that just a regular big lighter or just, just kind of one of those lazy flame lighters, you know, that's just going to be, uh, you know, just like a, t- a traditional lighter, uh, like a Zippo or something that doesn't really instill a lot of like fear, you know, it's just kind of a simple flame. But when you have a concentrated pressurized, you know, flame, an actual pretty serious uh, jet, you know, flame, you know, from a jet lighter, it is something that some people might back off, especially if you were to put, you know, engage that that jet lighter in someone's face, Uh, it would possibly get them to back off. Um, It's just a thought. Another option that would take a few moments to put together, but it is better than nothing, is that if you had some type of pouch or something to put something in, and it could just be your socks. In a real pinch, you could just take off a shoe and take a sock off, put your shoe back on, and fill whatever you can in that sock. It could be loose change. It could be pebbles and rocks. It could just be whatever. Maybe it's just something in your in your desk drawer at work. But these are kind of things to think about because you can have something to keep someone at bay, something to strike with, something that's going to give you a little more reach and a little more advantage. Keys. Now, you always, you know, in the movies, you know, you see people with their key ring and they're trying to palm the key ring and have the key sticking out. So they're going to use it to punch someone when they're walking in that dark garage in the middle of the night when they shouldn't be and they're alone and you know, they're just this little person and they're fearful. And I'm not saying that a key can't do nothing, but I think that a key works a lot better when it is um, in a more substantial form. And I personally use a key bar, just basically a key organizer. So there's multiple keys in there and it's in a solid state form. And that actually is almost like a miniature Kubaton. When you palm it, you can palm it really tight 
And of course, it's pretty small. So you're not going to get a lot of reach or any kind of major impact, but it is something that can concentrate force from a strike. So it, once again, better than nothing. A shovel and a rake. Even if you just had one or the other, just, just having that alone, just having the the actual handle, even if you didn't even have the attachment, can be something that could be a weapon to keep someone back, to strike with, to block various attacks. Uh, but it's a real bonus if you have the handle and the rake or and the shovel tip because you even get more reach and you have possibly more capabilities. And, of course, those uh, in attachments uh, are made of metal typically. And so, you know, you, you have more uh, potential for damage. Picture frame. This is interesting, you know, um, if you think about it at um, work or in most environments, there's pictures, right? There's decorations and you can use the decorations or pictures, in particular the picture frames, which have edges. They have typically are corners. Now, some picture frames are rounded and beveled and, and they don't have any kind of corners, but you can still use it as a shield or some kind of distraction. You could just even throw it at someone just to kind of create space. But in particular, the picture frames that are going to be maybe like several feet by several feet that you can still hold in your hands and both hands together and that has corners can definitely be like points of contact that you can strike with. So that's, in, of course, in particular, if you have nothing else available. It's just like, you know, taking a chair. You know, if you if you have nothing and you're in you're being backed into a corner and someone has a, a knife and is trying to attack you and all you have is a table and a chair – well, you try to scoot that chair in between you or try to keep that that table in between you and the threat. Of course, you know, if they keep chasing you round and round, uh, you, can t- you can use the chair. If you have a chair there, pick up the chair. Use the chair, you know, to, you know, to make things a little even. And you, you can use that as a tool uh, to help uh, not only just keep distance, but maybe you have to strike with it, God forbid. Now, a metal handheld fan. Of course, you could also use a floor fan if you had to, to pick it up and use it, you know, to throw it against someone or to use it as a shield. But I'm talking about those hand fans and you can even get them in metal. And when you collapse those, they actually are pretty solid. Um, I have one and it's pretty solid. It's almost like a metal cubiton. And so you could palm that and strike with that and it would not feel good. You could do even pressure points with it, potentially. A weighted cap. Now, this is something that is going to be a lot more specialized. You don't just typically find these at Walmart. But there are caps in different hats. I I wear a lot of boonie hats, and they have map pockets. And so you could put something that's a little bit weighted in there. And, of course, you could always sew something that has a little bit of weight into a ball cap. You can modify your clothes and your accessories. Of course, you can actually find these if you really look hard enough. You can find defensive weighted caps. And so it looks very non-threatening. I mean, you, you literally can't tell it. You even have anything going on. But you have a few more ounces than normal on your head. And so you can take it by just grabbing the brim. And the weight typically is at the top of the cap or the hat. And you can just strike out, just kind of snap your arm out into someone's face with that weighted cap. And that would jack someone up. Of course, there's different weights and different form factors. There's all kinds of options out there. But once again, you can make your own, but that is an option. A ballistic insert or a ballistic panel can also save your bacon. You can insert those in your backpack or your briefcase And it gives you an extra layer of protection. So it's not really practical for most people to be carrying around some kind of ballistic insert or to wear a ballistic vest under their work clothes, for example. Or when they're traveling, you know, or doing errands to have ballistic vest on. I mean, it's just not practical. But if you have your briefcase, if you have some type of messenger bag, you have your backpack. You can put things in there that's going to enhance it and make it a lot harder for someone to stab through or shoot through. It's just something else to think about. 
A monkey fist. Now, some people don't even know what this is, but you can certainly put various things in the monkey fist. But basically, it's a pair cord weave around an object and that you can you can use it in different ways as a projectile. And you can sometimes find these kind of like in various keychain accessory sections of various websites. And so what some people do is they take like large steel ball bearings as the core of the monkey fist that gets wrapped back paracord. And when you swing that around and you strike someone, it's going to really mess you up. So it looks very non-threatening though, um, because it just looks like it's a little ball or bundle of paracord, but it can be quite uh, the effective tool. A decoy wallet. Now this may not be so much like an actual self-defense tool, but it's a decoy. It's a distraction. It is something that can certainly buy you time potentially. And so when you are being chased or when someone's try- saying they want your money and they're trying to rob you, you can just simply say, no problem. I'll give you whatever you want. I'll give you my wallet. It's okay. Just, just don't hurt me, you know? And so what you can do is when you pull out this decoy wallet, this fake wallet, this uh, distraction, if you will, you, you just make sure that you hold it up enough that they can really see that you have it in your hand. And it's going to obviously, you know, look like a wallet because it is a wallet, but it won't have anything in there that's going to, to identify you. You might even put a few dollars in there. So if he, if he says, you know, open it up, I want to just, just prove that there's something in there. You can always open it up and you can just flash that there's some cash in there. And then you can Basically, instead of just handing it to them, though, you, you want to try to drop it or maybe even toss it a little bit from you so that they'll have to be forced to pick either you or the, or the wallet. And most criminals are very greedy and they're just going to go try to get the wallet. And when they're doing that and they're moving away from you, you move in the other direction. Just be mindful of where you throw it. You don't want to throw the wallet toward the exit. <laughs> you want to be going to the exit yourself. You want to throw it away from the exit the opposite way and get out of there. And that should hopefully buy you just enough time. By the, by the time they realize that they only got a few dollars or there's nothing really of major value there and that it's not even your real wallet, you're, you're long gone. So that's just uh, something to think about. Now, when you're traveling, though, there's opportunities that um, you can enhance some of your common hygiene products uh, to the next level, you know, if you want to. This is just another option. You never know when someone breaks into your hotel room in the middle of the night or something and you're brushing your teeth. And wouldn't that be great if your toothbrush was very, very stout that you could use as an impact weapon? Well, they actually make those, believe it or not, uh, metal toothbrushes. And so they also have other types of things too, but uh, like metal toothpicks. <laughs> I mean, these things are crazy. You can get them in all different sizes and different materials. They even have titanium toothpicks and they are wicked. I mean, you could really tear someone up with them. And so they even come in like keychain size formats that's um, real easy to carry. Now, in some environments, they may not allow that because it may, be, it may look a little bit too either tactical and or just a little bit too dangerous, but you might be able to get it in in some locations. So a metal toothbrush, metal toothpicks, metal tweezers. Now, I'm not talking about the really small ones. I'm talking about the real full-size precision tweezers made out of really good alloys, steel, whatever. They even have them in titanium. A little hard to palm, but if you palm it and you take your thumb, just like we talked about with the the metal straw, and you cup the end so that it doesn't slip, you know, around in your hand. If you struck something, your hand wouldn't slide forward. Tweezers can really mess you up. Now, is it going to like, really like deter someone in the sense of like, wow, you know, getting hit, you know, in the head with a hammer. It's not the same, but you can definitely jab and and basically stab someone. I mean, you could probably penetrate maybe an inch or so, and it's not going to feel good. So precision tweezers is an option. Extension cord. 
And I'm getting toward the end of the list here, as you can see. So before I finish, though, I just want to say that I don't sit around really and think about all the ways to hurt someone. <laughs> I'm just thinking of all the ways to protect myself and you guys. And one of the main reasons why I even did this video is that I've been getting a lot of emails from people over the last few months. And I kind of was like, well, let's let's talk about this again. A lot of people are interested in this topic. And there's a lot of people who live in environments countries, cities, they work in environments and all that, that are very restricted and they just don't have almost any, you know, options. They can't have a firearm. They can't have a blade. They can't have pepper spray or pepper gel. They can't have a coup baton. They can't have pretty much anything. So some of these things, maybe not all, but some, if not most of the things I'm talking about probably would be allowed. But once again, you want to check with the environment that you're in, you know, the, the so-called authorities or the, you know, whoever's in charge. Uh, but yeah, let's continue and wrap this up. So number 50, <laughs> we are on number 50 already. Uh, extension cord. It doesn't have to be very long. In fact, I think somewhere between like maybe like a six to eight foot cord or something in that range is about all you would need. You can double it up and you can use it as a whip. You can use it to to kind of lash out, strike. You can use it to even like uh, grab a, a limb and to tie up someone. I mean, you can do a lot. You know, you can get you can get a lot of positions and stuff with a really stout extension cord. And uh, just as a bonus. I always like to put bonuses when possible in a video that just like we talked about the shovel and the rake. And, you know, even if you just had the handle, it would be a great option to have if you had nothing. It, it, the same thing goes for the mop, especially if you could get into the janitor's closet or in the bathroom closet or whatever. And there's like a mop and uh, there's a broom, you know, and there's a broom handle. A lot of the brooms and the mops that you can easily unscrew the handle. And you can just use that like a, a defensive staff, if you will. So that's kind of what I would probably do. And then, of course, you have dust pans. Sometimes the brooms that go with dust pans, they, the handle also screws off pretty easy. These smaller dust pan handles might be better for situations when you're in more enclosed space. Or if you just you know feel more comfortable with a smaller form factor handle than maybe a larger broom handle. Uh, but it just in closing, though, I just want to say the toilet plunger should not be forgotten. Of course, you can typically find that in the janitor's room or in the bathroom sometimes in various facilities. But those plunger handles are typically made of like wood, some stout wood or hardwood. And they can be typically removed from the plunger pretty quickly and easily. And right there, you pretty much have a, a baton. I mean, you know, and it's going to be pretty formidable, you know, to get hit by that. So that is another option if you are trying to shelter or get away from a threat and you find yourself in the bathroom or in the janitor's closet, there might be a lot of options in those particular locations. I hope this video was interesting and it helped you, especially if you live or work in a place that's very restrictive. Hopefully you guys are still going to stay safe out there and everything's going to be fine, but just think about this further. If you have any other thoughts about this and this topic, feel free to share it. It's always good to share with each other so we can learn more and more options. Um, if you haven't subscribed already to the channel, please do so. Uh, yeah, thanks for hitting the like button. If you enjoyed this video, thanks for sharing you know, the videos to other people so that other people can get this information. I hope you guys have a great day. We'll catch you later.